been four months since we got Apple's new iPhone 15 lineup, and now that all of the hype has died down, I wanted to take a look at how the regular iPhone 15 models compare to the Pro models in the real world, covering my top five benefits that you should expect if you choose to spend the extra couple hundred dollars. First of all, I want to get titanium out of the way real quick because while the idea of having a titanium phone sounds really cool, it doesn't really look or feel that much different compared to aluminum on the regular 15 models, other than the added benefit of being a bit more resistant to scuffs and being lighter than the previous stainless steel, so don't worry too much about that. But getting into the main benefit number one, we have the cameras. Now, the regular iPhone 15 does get the same 48 megapixel camera on paper, but in reality, the sensor size itself is larger on the Pro models, which leads to better camera quality, especially in low light, since it can take in more light while snapping photos and recording videos. But the big benefit is the telephoto camera, which gives it a huge advantage. You get so much freedom and flexibility by being able to zoom in optically instead of digitally, which doesn't look great. Now, 3X on the 15 Pro model is good, giving you much higher quality with zoom shots, but the new 5X camera on the Pro Max is a game changer. This camera by itself allowed us to record very high quality footage from a distance at our recent CES trip, where we visited tons of different booths and shot videos showcasing multiple brands, and the quality of the close-up 5X video was just awesome. And plus, the 5X camera has a very unique 120 millimeter focal length, which gives it a pro camera look, which you can't easily replicate on any other smartphone. And looking back at our CES footage, it's really quite surprising that we shot everything with three iPhone 15 Pro Maxes. Now, the quality of the 5X lens itself is outstanding with an F 2.8 aperture, which is unheard of in the smartphone space because everybody else is using periscope lenses. Apple is using a Tetra Prism lens, which gives you two massive advantages. Advantage number one is that you get much better quality in low or dim light, so it doesn't have to raise the ISO as high, leading to an overall cleaner and sharper image. Advantage number two is that you actually get three-way stabilization for the first time ever on a telephoto camera like this. You get up and down, side to side, and in and out stabilization. This is by far the most stable telephoto lens that I've ever seen. And now let's move on to benefit number two, which is the USB-C port. Now, all of the iPhone 15 models have USB-C ports, which has been an awesome experience, allowing you to connect various accessories, hubs, and even hooking it up to my projector to play games using an Xbox controller. But the benefit for the 15 Pro models is that the transfer speed is actually 20 times faster than on the regular 15 models, 10 gigabits per second, instead of only 480 megabits per second, which is huge. And we experienced this in the real world on our CES trip last week, since we were recording all of the video onto our iPhones. After the first day of shooting, we came back to our hotel and did what we would usually do. We tried to airdrop the video footage from our iPhones onto the MacBooks so that we could organize it and then transfer it to this little SSD that we brought so we could transfer and split up the workload load across each of our MacBooks. But then came the realization that the iPhone 15 Pro now has a fast USB-C port, and we could literally just transfer the files to the SSD plugged in directly. So I tried it out, and I kid you not, it transferred so fast that I thought that it actually failed or errored out. But upon checking the folder in the SSD, every single clip was there, and it just felt so surreal that it transferred that quickly without any issues at all. So our editing workflow was so simple and quick, and it was all thanks to the new 10 gigabits per second USB-C port on the iPhone 15 Pro models, which is finally fast and functional enough to make the iPhone usable as your main video shooting device, which we proved with a jam-packed filming schedule at CES. And while we're on the topic of the awesome new USB-C port, I want to show you guys the best gaming controller for USB-C iPhones and Androids from our sponsor, GameSir. 
This is the G8 Galileo mobile gaming controller, which is designed to give you the most comfortable gaming experience you can get by simply extending the controller and plugging your iPhone into the convenient movable Type-C port and bam, you instantly have a console controller feel and experience packed with dual Hall Effect joysticks, triggers, and buttons, two of which are programmable on the backside. It supports pass-through charging and 3.5 millimeter audio with replaceable faceplates and thumbsticks, and it just made my gaming experience a hundred times better, and I highly recommend it. So go ahead and check it out using the link in the description and pinned comment below. And now getting into benefit number three, we have performance. The new iPhone 15 Pro models get the A17 Pro chip. Now at first, when this came out, we were worried about the overheating issues and the battery life drainage, which was a problem. But after Apple's big update months ago, we've had had no issues at all. Overheating has completely disappeared and the battery life is incredible just like it was before and we can now enjoy more performance than ever. What shocked me was when I literally tried to get it to overheat and have the display brightness dim down like it always did in the past, but to my shock, it didn't dim whatsoever while playing various games in the office, even 120 FPS games, which was so impressive that I just couldn't comprehend how Apple was doing this. Now on top of that, the iPhone 15 Pro models also come with eight gigabytes of RAM compared to six, which I believe is finally the number where I no longer notice any trouble multitasking with various apps, and I no longer have any apps closing down and having to start fresh over again. I mean, this has the same amount of RAM as you get in the base M3 MacBook Pro for Pete's sake. So it's finally enough, and overall, the general performance has been incredible with no slowdowns whatsoever across the board. Now getting into the main benefit number four, we have the action button. Now when this first came out, I wasn't sure what to do with it, so I figured I could just use it to open up the camera app quickly to take photos or record videos. However, I found myself just using the previous method of opening the camera app with this little button because my fingers just got used to it over the years, so I thought the action button was a waste of time and a gimmick. But for the past couple of months, I've actually been loving the action button now that I switched it over to opening the Tesla app. It's just so convenient, instead of having to unlock my phone, find the app, and get in, it just happens instantly no matter which app you're in or if you're phone is even unlocked or on the lock screen, it just opens right up. And I love how Apple designed it so you could do basically anything you want, even fully customizable shortcuts. Now I thought this was a gimmick at first, but now I find myself using it all the time. It's just such a convenient little button, especially now that it's winter and it's freezing cold outside. It allows me to quickly open up the app and turn on my heater. So I think Apple did a great job. And now finally for benefit number five, we have all of the other exclusive additional features that add value. Now, first of all, I seriously cannot get over the 120 Hertz ProMotion display technology that's exclusive to the Pro models that makes it feel so smooth that I don't think I would ever be able to switch back to a regular iPhone just because of that feature alone. That by itself makes a bigger performance and snappiness difference than any chip has ever seemed to make. Doubling the refresh rate, it just feels so quick and snappy. Now on top of that, the new iPhone 15 Pro models also come with Wi-Fi 6E, which you can't get on the regular 15s, which has given me a noticeable boost to the reliability of Wi-Fi inside of my house. And it seems like all of the signals in general are now having higher strength compared to before. On top of that, it comes with 256 gigs of storage, instantly adding $100 of value. So just include including all of the exclusive features that you get makes it clear that it's worth spending the extra cash if you have it. So with all that said, after four months, I've gotta say that the benefits that you get with the Pro models instead of the regular 15s are so worth it, especially in terms of the cameras and the faster USB-C port. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and subscribe above and click that circle right over there for more videos like this one.